Alright, welcome back to the channel. In our last episode at Table Mountain, we ran out of energy, we ran out of food, and so we promised you that we would come back and finish the hike of doing Beeston Falls. Murphy's Law had other plans in store for us, and we have been sick, and so we did not hit the window that we needed to hit to get to Table Mountain, and it is now May, and the flowers are pretty much kaput. So, we have a couple other things in store for you. Uh -huh. Yes, motorcycle riding. Motorcycle riding. So we are going to hop on Katie and we are going to go all the way to the north end of Lake Oroville and see Lime Saddle Campground and Marina. And we're going to visit a covered bridge. Uh -huh, the or at Oregon City. We're also going to go to another marina, Bidwell. Bidwell Canyon Marina. That's it. And campground. And also show you the campground that we are staying, which is... Lofer Creek. Lofer Creek. And the lake is really full. It's quite beautiful. There's a zillion houseboats out there. And I guess this weekend is probably going to be a big one. Yeah, so let's go yep. check out Oroville, Lake Oroville, and see what we find. All right, let's roll. <laughs> let's roll. Originally populated by Oregonians, the town was first known as Oregon City. Next came Mexicans from Sonora who outnumbered the Oregonians and changed the name to Campo Seco, which means dry camp, because of lack of water. The Oregon City Schoolhouse was built in February 1872. The district was later annexed to the Cherokee District in 1923 and the Oregon City School was closed as the population center shifted. It's currently a museum and hosts the Wildflower Weekends in the third week of March. The Oregon City Bridge, also called the Castleberry Bridge, is a 35-foot span over the Oregon Creek. Built in the late 1800s, it was refurbished in 1984. Next up is the ghost town of Cherokee, so named because gold was found here in the 1850s by a band of Cherokee Indians from Oklahoma. Once occupied by the Maidu Indians, this town was the site of the world's greatest hydraulic gold mine. The mine covered 26,000 acres with 100 miles of sluice. In Cherokee's heyday, there were over a thousand residents. Also, the first diamonds discovered in America were discovered here in 1863, the largest weighing six carats. You can still find the ruins of stone walls and a vault that still marks the site of the Cherokee Mining Company office, a post office, and an old caboose, and a land office that was once used as a museum. In 1850, a group of Cherokee Argonauts, that's what they say, I'll have to look that word out. <laughs> So they were here in 1850, they established a town in 1853, and during its heyday in 1875, there were 17 saloons here, as well as, <laughs> as, well as a brewery and churches and stores, and over a thousand people lived here. Wow, that's pretty cool. It is. Nice big gold monitor here. So they obviously had quite the gold mining operation going on here. It's amazing to think how big the town was and now uh, you could throw a rock from one end to the other. <laughs> Alrighty, we're just camped over at Lofer Creek. We're just taking a look around. How do you like your bike? Meh. No, it's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of fun. Yep. 
Lime Saddle Campground is at the north tip of the lake. It features 35 campsites overlooking the lake. The site seemed to be able to accommodate larger RVs and offers full hookups as well as a dump station. We had hoped to grab lunch at a restaurant at the Lime Saddle Marina overlooking the lake. Unfortunately, there is none. They do have boat rentals, ski boats, motor boats, patio boats. They have a bait shop and a convenience store, but it also was closed today. As we enter the Green Line Tour, we pass the old Green Line Bridge. The Green Line Tour is a driving tour which is 15 miles long and it's designated by a painted green line from historic downtown all the way up to the Orville Dam Visitor Center. At the Bidwell Canyon Marina, we hoped finally to get some lunch at the Anchor Bar and Grill, but apparently it doesn't open for the season until the following weekend. They also have boat rentals, slip rentals, a bait shop, fuel dock, and more. Bidwell Canyon Campground features 75 campsites divided into two loops on either side of the marina. The sites can accommodate RVs and all of the sites have full hookups. Here at the historic Bidwell Bar, there is the county's mother orange tree and the relocated Bidwell Bar Bridge. A higher ground at what is now the Bidwell Canyon Recreation Area. This bridge was the state's first suspension bridge transported from New York via Cape Horn. It was relocated to this recreational site to make way for the Lake Orville Dam. I haven't seen one in the wild before. The Lake Oroville Visitor Center at Kelly Ridge overlooks Lake Oroville and Oroville Dam. A 47-foot viewing tower offers a panoramic view of the dam, the lake, the Sierra Nevadas, the city, the valley, the Sutter Butte mountain range, which is actually the smallest in the world. Down below is the Visitor Center. It features interpretive displays and audio-visual room where films about the dam and surrounding area are shown throughout each day. Either side of the core is a transition zone of coarser material. The outer shell of the dam consists primarily of rock, sand, and gravel. A new Bidwell Bar Bridge was suspended 600 feet above the middle fork of the Feather River. Loafer Creek Campground has a nice mix of pull-through and back-in sites. There are no hookups, but each site has nice shade, decent separation, and really nice clean bathrooms. We hope you liked our tour of the Oroville area. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video.